the Detroit Lions. And who MCDC Motor City Dan Campbell. I'm a I'm a fan of his. I'm a fan. Let's go through the odds. Of course, odds brought to you by BetUS.com, where the game begins. Link down in the description. Go ahead and check it out. Wins four and a half. To go over is minus 140. To go under is plus 110. To win the division, plus 1,800. You bet on that, you're probably setting your money on fire because this is a team that is in tank mode. Uh, plus 7,500 to win the NFC. To make the playoffs, just to make the playoffs, even as a wild card, they are plus 500. To not make the playoffs is minus 900. They are a projected favorite in zero games. They are not projected to be a favorite in a single game. They have the sixth most difficult schedule in the league this year. Three straight win total unders, all of those coming under Matt Patricia. They've won just eight games by more than three points since 2018. That is the worst in the NFL. They traded Stafford. They brought in Goff, but there's basically no skill weapons. They lost their top three receiving threats to free agency last year. They are ranked dead last in defensive DVOA last season, but... I would expect some secondary improvement. I think uh, year two with Jeff Okuda should be better than what they were in year one because he was that was that was bad. And then they've got Corn Elder coming in, and I think that's going to be good. I think I think he's okay. The offensive line is the strength here. You know they've got uh, Decker, uh, Ragno, and Panay Sewell, the draft pick. Goff historically plays better from a clean pocket, so that is good. But again. It, not a ton of weapons. You're going to have to develop some guys there. They are facing the fourth toughest schedule, including, and that's that's for uh, projected win totals, fourth toughest schedule, including cold environments late. And if you look at the schedule, this is a dome team that's going to be playing outside at Green Bay, you know, in Denver, in Pittsburgh, et cetera, late. So, and this team is clearly in tank mode. So with the win total at four and a half, which is super low, if they get late in the season and you have got a shot to get that number one pick, do they even field a competent team down the stretch? I don't know. Obviously, we don't. The NFL does not like to talk about teams tanking, but we know that it happens. I, I'm curious. I'm going to go under here. I, they're not projected to win a single game. And while I do like Dan Campbell, I think it's going to take a little bit of time to build the culture that he wants because I do think. Matt Patricia, which I thought was going to be a good hire, he left a mess. That place is yeah. a disaster. So the the place that I, Dan Campbell, if he wants to be successful, he's going to have to be Brian Flores. Yes. And if he's Brian Flores with changing that culture and getting these guys to play hard and to play tough, even in spite of the fact that they just don't have talent, they're going to rattle off some wins, and we're both going to be wrong here. I've got them at four and, 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 and 13, and and so that would be an under. But at the same time, as a bet, it's a stay away just because there there's a world where he gets these guys fired up to win five games. He gets these guys fired up to where, you know, the front office is trying to lose games. And, and you know, the 53 men that are going to take the field on Sunday take advantage of that and they are, are take offense to that. And and Dan Campbell uses that as motivation, takes advantage of it, and and he shows them, hey man, those guys in the office don't believe in you. Give them a reason to believe, or embarrass the shit out of them and take the draft pick away from them. How about you do that? Yeah, yeah, that could be that could be something. I I, I could see it. I've, we've never seen it before until Flores. So the fact that I just think Dan Campbell will come in and do what Brian's done, not it's not that easy. It's not that easy at all. But there's a world where I think they could get to five wins. Is why there's no way on earth I'd bet the under. I did, but yeah, in our picks, I'm picking the under. Yeah, I'm picking the under as well. I I like to think that they would, but we have seen win 16 teams before. It, I don't know that they'll be the first to go win 17, but I I do think there's a chance that they I might not Brian, have a lot no, of wins. I think I think golf is better than that. Listen, we yes, is golf. Is golf a great quarterback? No. Is golf deserving of the massive contract that he got? Absolutely not. All right. Is golf the worst quarterback in this league? Hell no. No, not he's even, not the not worst. Even close, not even a little bit. Okay. But he was and still so, like it, it, there were there were years in Los Angeles where he was still middle of the pack, even with Sean McVay. So what's he going to be like in this offense? 
Uh, middle I, of the pack. Lower end of the middle of the lower pack. Lower end of the middle of the pack. So bottom, well, bottom. Some of the, hang on now. Some of that's because he's just got no weapons either. I mean, well, yeah. who's he throwing the ball to? Exactly. Like, how are they going to score? All right, without like, Googling anything, name a receiver on this team. I can't. I can't either. I can't. When, I, <laughs> when we started this, I almost started looking guys up. No, I, I, I was almost looking. started looking guys up. And you know what? I said, I'm not going to do it because I'm going to be honest on the show. I don't Today, right now, Sunday, we just watched preseason, and I don't know a single receiver for Jared Goff to throw the ball to. Hold on. I was just looking at this yesterday, and I feel now like you're gonna look it up. i got to look it up now because I, I was thinking Quez Watkins was on this team, but I know he's not. Um, I'm about to say, no, he's not. I know for a fact he's not. No, it's a, that was the first one that came to my head, but I know that that's not right. So, uh, let's see. Looking at teams, we are pulling up the Detroit Lions depth chart. I'm in the middle of multiple fantasy drafts going on right now. Here we go. And I don't know, outside of Swift, I don't know a single skill player for the it's, Lions. It's Quintez Cephas that I was thinking of, the uh, the guy that played at Wisconsin. So he's one, Brashard Perryman, Tyrell Williams. They drafted Amon Ross St. Brown, Damian Ratliff to Chad Hansen, Victor Bolden. Khalif Any Raymond. running backs other than uh, DeAndre Swift. Swift. They they they've got Jamal Williams and Jamar Jefferson. You remember the kid from Oregon State, like the the small oh, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah, got him. I liked him at Jefferson. Okay, like I think the running game is going to be okay. I just man, I think the running game is actually going to be okay too because I think they're going to run the football a lot just to keep the other team from scoring a bunch. They they did draft Sage Surratt at, or maybe not draft. He might have been an undrafted free agent, but either way, the kid from Wake Forest, like he's he's really good. But they've got him listed as a fourth string guy. So, I listen. They're no not weapons. Gonna be good. They're not going to be good at football, but they're not supposed to be right. Yeah, that's right. So that's we'll, a, this we'll is just tank see mode. How this works out? I there's a world where they don't win a game. I, I don't want that to happen. I don't either. My team has happened. It's happened to this franchise before. It's happened to my team. It's not a fun thing. Everybody, this game is so hard, and these guys all work so hard to get. A win is important. Hey, by by the way, we didn't talk much about it when it happened, but the firing of Jim Caldwell, how dumb does that look when you are looking at, at what happened with Patricia and everything else? Like, this is a franchise that has been... one of the worst firings ever. He, he made it to the playoffs twice. In his last season, he went 9-7 and seven and just barely missed the playoffs and got fired. Their, their problem has always been their personnel, the way they build this team. Yes. It's not, it's not coaching. Jim Caldwell was not the problem or not the answer. They they just didn't put a team around him. That's it. And if Caldwell made decisions on personnel, then he deserved to be fired because they, that team was not good. Like they, they were, well, really they were because he was a really good coach. Yeah, they were better under him than they have been. But under everybody. But, no, whew, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, you, you got that right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.